you know what the molecular formula is for water? H2O. That's right. Let's write down all the equivalencies that we can get from that formula. So what are some of the equivalencies we can write from that? H2O, good. there's at least one more set of equivalencies that we can get. Mm -hmm. What else can we get from that molecular formula? Mm -hmm. That's good. Maybe there's one more that we could write. What does this say on the left hand side? No, that was the same thing you wrote here. Right. So it's easy to confuse moles and molecules since they start the same, but they're very different. So if one mole of water is 18 grams of water, then one individual molecule of water is 18 AMUs of water. Okay. So again, we get one column that deals with individuals and one column that deals with moles. And the numbers are set up so that the moles will be the same numerically as the answers for the individuals. So this last step, we needed both the molecular formula and the periodic table. Uh, this is what we remember called the molar mass of water. The molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. This is the one that's used most often for solving problems. In fact, practically every problem that you see, and almost every situation in the lab, you're going to need the molar mass. So this is what's used uh, the most often, is the molar mass. Um, but we can, uh, okay, so if you need to translate between moles and grams, you can use the periodic table. But what if you need to translate between moles and moles? Well, a lot of the time you can do that just straight from the formula. The formula takes you from moles of one substance to moles of another substance. So we should have gone over all this before we did that last problem. So you should go back now later and do that problem again. Hopefully that will make more sense because we used a lot of these conversions that were hidden in the molecular formula and we had to set that out first. Okay.